This video is going to cover the topic of partial area and arc length of circles. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for the video is how do we calculate area, partial area, and arc length of circles? Let's start by looking at partial area. As we already know, the area of a circle is the space inside a circle, and we can calculate the area by doing pi times the radius squared. So if we were just looking at this circle and we wanted to find the area, we'd say, oh, well, I know it's 3.14 times my radius squared. And I would just go through my order of operations and solve. So that's kind of the standard way we just approach normal circles, right? But sometimes we come across circular objects in the world and we don't need to know um, the entire space of the circle. So let's look at a semicircle, which is just a fancy way of saying half a circle. This would be an example of a semicircle, right? Only half the circle is actually um, on this image, right? We only need to know the area of half of the size of a circle. So we would kind of look at this normally, right? We'd say, oh, I want the area of my circle, so I would do pi times my radius squared. But since I only want one half of, half of the space, right? I really just want one half of this formula. So let's fill in what we know. We want one half of pi, about 3.14, times, looks like our radius is six, squared. And from there we would do our normal order of operations. So I would have to do my squaring first. And from here, normally I would just do my multiplication left to right, but multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't really matter the order. And I just kind of like to do it where I get my entire area first. So I would figure out this portion here, right? That's the original area. And then I need to figure out what half of that would be. And I can multiply by one half as a fraction. I can multiply one half as a decimal. I could divide it into two. And then I will know what my area of my semicircle would be, which would be approximately 56 units squared. I neglected to put units. I'm just going to say units here. Um, 56 and 52 hundredths units squared would be the area of just that half of the circle. In addition to semicircles, we can also have different fractional amounts. So this, I can tell, represents one-fourth of an entire circle, right? It looks like it's just that one top left corner, essentially, of the circle. So as always, I'm starting with the same exact um, equation but this time I only want one fourth of it. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I've done before, but I'm going to at the end cut it into fourths or multiply it by one fourth. And once again, right, I could multiply these in any order since they're commutative, but I like to just kind of get my whole circle figured out first. So I'm gonna do that part and then do my one fourth of that. So the area here would be one fourth of about 200 square units. And I can divide that into four sections by dividing by four. I could multiply by the fraction one-fourth, or I could multiply by the decimal um, 25 hundredths. All of those work. They will all get me my final result, which ends up being just over 50 square units, 50 and 24 hundredths square units. And that's for our quarter circle. So in addition to semicircles and quarter circles, you can see that we also might be presented with this shape, which looks like it is three fourths of my circle, right? Looks like there's just one piece missing. So once again, we're starting with our regular formula, pi times the radius squared, but this time we just want three fourths of that. And as always, I plug in what I know. I definitely have to do my exponent first and then I can do this multiplication in any order, but as we've seen, I kind of like to get that whole circle figured out first and then find out what three fourths of that would be. So I know that the entire circle would have been uh, just over 50 square units, but I just want three fourths of that. So I could multiply that by 75 hundredths. I could divide it into four sections and use three of them, or I can multiply the um, number by the fraction three fourths. 
And either way, I get um, a little over 37 square units. And I always kind of check in my head, and you guys know that we should always be doing this as mathematicians. I always check to make sure that's reasonable. So obviously it's going to be 3 fourths. It's going to be more than half of the area. And if the area was 50-ish, half of it would have been 25. So it makes sense that kind of in between 25 and 50 is about 37, 38. So that seems totally reasonable for my answer. Which brings us to the second half of the title, right? We've talked about partial area of circles, and now we're going to look at arc length. And the arc of a circle is just that partial piece of the circumference, right? So these might be considered little arcs. That's a messy little arc to the side there. So the arc length is really just part of the circumference, part of what surrounds the outside of the circle. And of course, um, I want to make sure we remember that the circumference of the circle is the diameter about three times around. In fact, it's pi times around. So in this case, if we wanted the circumference, we know the diameter is six, and we'd say, oh, it fits about 3.14 times around. So the circumference of this kind of circle here on the side would be 18 and 84 hundredths. Oh, units. I did not want squared. Sorry about that. That should not be there. Just plain old units. So just as we saw with partial area, arc length, we need to know what part of the circumference we're looking for, right? So I can see, I have this kind of color coded, I can see that the arc length I'm looking for represents one half of the entire circle, right? So I'm looking for one half of the circumference, which means if I'm using my equation, my formula, I need to figure out my circumference, but then use one half of it. And just a note on this one, right, the um, diameter that I have for this picture that I've chosen isn't labeled. So the fact that this is 9 here means this is also 9. Our diameter is 18, so I want to make sure I know that that's the case. So I really want 1 half of my diameter times about pi. And just as you saw me do before, I tend to figure out the circumference of the whole thing first and then finish up by doing one half of that. And when we do that, um, when we are labeling this, this is just plain units, there are no squares, right? This is a measurement of the distance around, similar to perimeter. And it looks like it would be 28 and about 26 hundredths units around this entire half of the circle. And of course, this just represents that blue line, right, the arc length. It doesn't incorporate um, the diameter at this point. It's just telling us what that blue line represents. In the second example of arc length, you can see I'm looking again for that blue section of the outside of my circle, and I can tell that that represents one-fourth of the entire circumference. So I'm going to try to figure out what one-fourth is of my pi times my diameter. And once again, I've left you here with just the radius, so hopefully we can realize, oh, if this were the entire diameter, that'd be an extra 7. So my diameter is actually 14 that I need to multiply by pi, and then take 1 fourth of that to find my circumference. So I'm going to go ahead and do all my calculations. And when I do that, I see that just that little piece of the circle, that little quarter arc, um, would be about 11 units, 10 and 99 hundredths units for my calculations. And in the last example, I hope it might be pretty obvious that this is now 3 fourths of the entire circle, and we're going to do the same thing again really briefly to find that um, circumference of just 3 fourths of the circle. And you can take a minute to give it a try for yourself, and then I'll share my answer. How'd we do? Hopefully we noticed that again I gave you the radius, and so the diameter would actually be 8 of these units, right? All the way across, we'd have 8. So I plugged that in, and I solved, and took 3 fourths of my answer and got just under 19 units. So the essential question of the video was how do we calculate partial area and arc length of a circle? And we've seen a bunch of different examples. I'm not leaving you with a question to solve. We'll do some more practice in class. So bring your notes and any questions you might have.